Nine days ago, I had an anterior cervical decompression and fusion with internal fixation and harvest bone graft. We're going to talk about um, the procedure, why it was done, um, what was done and what to expect um, afterwards. A couple of months ago, I had numbness in my fingers, which was spreading from my pinky to the rest of my fingers. Um, I went and got an MRI done on my neck and this is a side view of the MRI. So you can see here the disc is protruding out into the spinal canal, which is pressing on the spinal cord. So what happens is this here is the front of your throat. This is the back. So the reason why it has to be done anteriorly or meaning from the front is because the spinal cord's in the way so they can't come at it from the back because it could be more potentially damaging to your spinal cord. And they come in here and they will clean this disc out, the one that's protruding. They'll clean all that out and so this is the decompression part. They're decompressing the spinal cord. And then they will get a small piece of bone from the iliac crest in your hip and place that inside a prosthetic cage. They will then push that into where the disc used to be in here and then they will then, uh, so that's the harvest the bone graft part, then they will then put a plate at the front here with screws going into the above and below where the disc was. This is called internal fixation which is the plate and the screws. The fusion part of the procedure happens afterwards. During six weeks to six to twelve months, the bone graft will slowly fuse to the vertebrae above and below. Um, the internal fixation, which is the plate, is there for extra support. Um, so in the next six weeks, you have to be very careful about falling over or, or having an accident or, or anything like that because it's quite um, fragile. The next day after your operation, you will have an x-ray, which is to make sure that the plates and the bone graft are in the correct place. So this is what it looks like from the side on an x-ray. This is the plate. This is the front of the throat. This is the back of, back of the neck. So the plate along here and the screws which go into the vertebrae above and below. This space here is where my disc used to be pressing backwards onto the spinal cord. Now you can see with the markers they've put in here, this is the bone graft in the cage which now replaces the disc. From the front, it looks like that. You can see the four screws and the plate from the front of the neck. So what can you expect after this procedure? The reason why I'm doing this video is because I could not find much information about what to expect at all. I wasn't sure whether I'd be flat on my back in bed for six weeks. All I really knew was that I had to wear a neck brace for six weeks. So when I first woke up, uh, I was in a fair bit of pain, although I had the pethidine. There was a drainage tube in my neck and in my hip, a catheter, and of course the drip. The very next day, less than 24 hours later, all of these tubes were taken out and I was just on painkillers that, that you could swallow. It was very difficult to swallow at first and very painful, very difficult to walk, but the very next day I, I was up and limping around. Um, the hip was quite sore too. You don't wake up in a neck brace. You don't have to sleep with your neck brace on. If you're just padding around in hospital or at home, you don't have to wear one at all. Or you can wear the, what they've called the soft collar brace, which is just very, very spongy. Um, I find it doesn't do much really at all. So I prefer not to wear it at all. You don't really have that limited movement. I can move my head to the side and down. I just can't lift my head backwards so I can't take a sip of a drink or it's very hard to get up and down from bed. You have to support your head as you're leaning yourself down onto bed. It's a lot easier to swallow now 10 days later. A lot easier to talk. It was hard to talk in the first day or two. Um, I'm weight bearing on my leg. I'm not limping much anymore. Um, so it's a new when you do go out of the house uh, or especially in a car, you must wear the, the hard collar brace. 
which in my case looks like this. So I'll just attach it and then it just clips on here. So this is this is hard plastic. It's quite padded so it's fairly comfortable. Um, so this is mainly for protection if you're in a car and you have an accident while this is all very fragile or if you're out and about the shopping centre and somebody might knock you over, you might have a fall. Uh, so this is what you have to wear for six weeks when you're out and about. But I'm trying to minimise the amount of time that I'm out and about. I'd rather just be at home. <clears throat> um, so as you can also see, the, the scar on my neck is, you know, about well, an inch and a half long. Um, this was only 10 days ago and it's practically healed uh, quite well already. I only just took the dressing off it. There's a bit of bruising there, but um, the, the hip scar is only about uh, one, one inch big. So that's not too bad. The doctor said to me that a lot of people have about one month off work. I'm finding that most of the time that I spend at home, I, I can't seem to get very comfortable sitting up in a chair for about 20 minutes. It all starts getting quite painful just with the weight of holding your head up. And then I have to go and lay down just flat on my back, sleeping only flat on my back for about an hour. And then I can get up again for a little while. So you're, you're constantly alternating which position that you're in. But unlike lower back surgery, you don't have to be bedridden at all. Um, and walking becomes, well for me it was fine after, after a week and I only needed help with a shower the, the day after and the day after that um, I was able to shower myself. Um, I was in hospital five days um, and then came home so at the moment it's uh, only ten days later and I think I'm doing pretty well. As for whether the numbness will go away, I don't know yet. It, it might take a couple of months for, um, they might fix themselves, they might not. So I might be stuck with this numbness in my fingers, which I still have. Um, thankfully, it didn't go so far as to get uh, weakness um, in my, my hands or anything. So if you have this problem, you really need it dealt with as quickly as possible. As soon as I had that MRI, I was in hospital two weeks later. The longer you leave it, the worse the symptoms are going to get. This numbness would have spread up my arms um, and then I would have had a weakness. Eventually my legs and feet would become numb and weak and essentially you're almost walking around with a broken neck with a piece of bone sticking out into your spinal cord so that if you have a small car accident that most people would walk away from you could sever your spinal cord um, or if you do nothing about it you don't have this operation then you're slowly turning into a quadriplegic as the disc presses further and further out so the sooner you get this done the better um, so hopefully my symptoms will will go away but the one thing's for sure they're definitely not getting worse which is the most important thing there's no specific physio, post-op or any specific do's and don'ts apart from the obvious don't go lifting heavy things and you know go skydiving or anything silly like that but um, it's pretty much you, you, you know your own limits, you know how far you can move your head, you know what, what's comfortable for you to sit, sleep, whatever. Um, another, thing, another thing I forgot to mention is uh, Preoperatively, when you speak to your anaesthetist, uh, it, it's in, it's really important that you you're given uh, anaesthetic and and post-op painkillers that will not make you sick, um, and they they can give you something different so that you don't wake up in recovery very nauseated because um, as you can imagine, it's going to be a bit awkward for you to get up and be sick um, and there's also um, a worry that you could rupture your wound um, but I mean apart from the fact that you can't really get up and lean over a bowl so that's important too. I woke up and I was not sick at all and the 
the post-op um, pethidine that I had did not make me sick either, so that's another important thing that you should discuss with your doctor first.